hurricane season officially starts next Wednesday, so it's the best time to get y'all prepared and get y'all ready um, because it looks like we're going to have a really active season. I'm not sure what the different stages of a hurricane are. Um, after Ike, they noticed some things. They changed the Saffir Simpson scale. Um, basically, what I learned on Tuesday is they really overuse it, um, but what they had to do after Ike, what they learned was that it used to tie in the storm surge to the actual um, hurricane rating. And so they would say if you had a hurricane one, you maybe had like two to four foot storm surge. If you had a two, up to maybe six. And of course, we remember with Ike, it was a two, but we had over 20 foot of surge. So they really saw that, you know, it's not probably a good idea to put those two together because then it's confusing and people don't really understand. So they took it out and now it's just the wind. So a category one is from 75 to 95 miles per hour. A category two, which is what we have with Ike, is 96 to 110. However, the higher up in the storm you go, um, the uh, <clears throat> stronger the winds are. So if y'all remember how Chase Bank, all those windows were broken everywhere? Well, they were getting wind gusts of up to 130 miles per hour down there. So if you know anyone that lives downtown in high rises and they think, well, I'm high, I don't have surge, I don't need to evacuate, well, you might want to remind them that they probably need to evacuate as well. Um, a category three is what they start calling a major hurricane, and it's from 111 to 130. A category four is 131 to 155. And the one that we never want to have here is a category five, 155 or higher, which would be a catastrophic hurricane, which would be total. From a four day out, it can swing either anywhere from 290 miles on either side of that line. So um, it can go either way. And not only can it go either way, but you can experience winds even up to tropical storm or hurricane on either on either side, depending the size of the storm. The 72 hours, it can swing anywhere from 230 miles one way or the other, uh, 48, 160, and then 24 can go 100 miles left or right of the projected line. Um, and you definitely want to make sure, even if you're in that spotted part, that that's usually like one or two days out further, you really need to um, and check and see because even if it's on landfall, what if you evacuate to Dallas? Well, at Dallas, it was actually still a hurricane by the time it got there. So you're still gonna get the rain, you're still gonna get the wind. So you need to think about which way it might go when you're thinking of where you can evacuate. And we're gonna talk about how we make a plan and how you know where to evacuate. <clears throat> we need to know about storm. You need to figure out where you are at home so that you know, um, because they're gonna start evacuating by zone, starting with the yellow on up. And you really need to know if you are in one of those zones because you're gonna most likely have a mandatory evacuation and it's really, really stressed that you go ahead and do the evacuation. So what, do we, what are my main things that I want to get to you? Make a plan, build a kit, and stay informed. Um, you need to have a family emergency plan. And in your packet, you have a sample of what a plan looks like. That's provided by FEMA, and it's from ReadyGov. Ready Ready .gov. And um, if you do it online at ReadyGov, it actually, as you fill it out and populate it, there's a second page that goes with it, and it makes little cards that you can cut out and laminate and keep in your wallet. Um, have your kids, if they're old enough, they have a wallet, put it in their wallet in case y'all get separated during evacuation for some reason or anything like that. And um, really do this because I, everything that I've given y'all, I went through and did myself before. And there was a lot of this information I did not know um, that I couldn't think of off the top of my head, you know. So I went and looked it up and then I actually had it. So really take the time to sit down with your family and do this and really let everyone know the plan especially if you have older kids who may drive on their own or something and may think, mom, I can go do whatever. Um, and you know what, if you have older kids that are have their own families, know what their plan is so that you're not worried during the storm of where everyone might be. This is what I really wanna stress to y'all um, whenever you're making your packet. You really want to get together, get together all of those really important documents, your insurance information, both for your home and your personal insurance, your health insurance. You want to get together um, if you have any prescriptions. You saw she had the prescriptions. Um, it's hurricane season, and maybe you only have a couple of refills left on something that you have to take every day for the rest of your life. Go ahead and call your doctor's office and say, you know what, I would like to have a few extra refills in case you have a passport. Um, go ahead and try to make a copy of that. Um, your Any of your IDs, your social security number, all of those little things that if something happens, you may not have with you. Another good tip is if you have a video camera, even like the pocket cameras now have video mode, go through your house and take a video of your stuff, what I like to call it. Um, all of those, especially those big, make a copy of all of that. And then where are you going to evacuate to? Does your Aunt Rose live in San Antonio and that's where you think you might go? Someone that you trust in another city um, that you could send a copy of all that to and have them store securely for you. So if something happens and you don't, you're not able to grab 
everything that you've put together, you have a backup and you don't have to stress about it too much because you know that it's somewhere else safe. Or we had a good suggestion by another employee yesterday to scan everything and email it to yourself. We want to, you want to plan for at least three days, I would say to at least a week of having no power just to be on the safe side. Um, so part of that is having that kit ready, having plenty of water, both drinking and also a good tip, you know, they used to tell you to fill your tubs and then you never really heard about that for a while. Go ahead and do that. And we, some people that live up north, they have, they're on well water and because they didn't have electricity, they weren't able to get their water. Um, so they had to use that for washing their clothes, for washing their dishes, for giving themselves baths, different things like that. So it may come in handy. There's definitely need to make sure that you stay, you wanna keep sure that everyone in your family stays hydrated. And not just the people, but don't forget about your pets. Make sure you have plenty of water for those pets too. Um, and then you wanna have plenty of non-perishable food. And if you camp a lot and you have any of those camping stoves or any of the camping tools that you use, those are really great to have um, in you know, a situation like this. So really look at everything you already have and then kind of decide what you need from it out. What if you have damage to your home? Um, a lot of people had damage and you know those contractors come in from all over the United States and they swarm like bees and you don't want to get stuck in a bad situation with a bad contractor so these are just some tips on what to do and um, make sure that you try to use our local contractors that are licensed first um, try to get at least three different estimates um, and read your contracts carefully and make sure they have their own insurance their liability insurance because if ball falls off your roof you don't want to pay for that he should be doing what he's supposed to. Um, and then don't give out too much of your personal information because you don't want to have identity theft, but make sure that they have um, good identification when they're giving you their information and never pay anything up front. If they say they need $10,000 to get started putting your new roof on, that should probably be a red flag that something's not right. Um, out of those 74 deaths from Hurricane Ike, the after storm deaths were mostly generator related from people having their generators in their apartments, in their homes, in their garages, and you can't smell it. You don't know that it's coming and a lot of these um, families and little kid babies, it just breaks my heart, were dying in their sleep and it's just terrible. So really know if you have a generator, do most of y'all have generators, know how to use them. It's also probably a good time to maintenance them. They need their oil change, you need to crank them up and make sure they work. So look at that, it's a good time to look at that right now. But make sure that they're in a well-ventilated area. Outside is best. Um, it's not gonna do you much good if you put it right next to an open window because those fumes are gonna come right back in. Um, think about what, uh, where you wanna put them. If you're worried about it raining in case we get some freak storm like we did after I come or something, get a tarp, you can cover them up, you know, but just they're still gonna be well-ventilated on the sides. Don't enclose them in anywhere to keep them out of the rain. Because, like I said, carbon monoxide poisoning, you don't really know it's coming. There's not really a lot of side effects, and it can come on quickly, and it's just a terrible way when it's, it's pre very preventable. So how can you stay informed, which is our third bullet on what we wanted to learn today? There's tons of ways. How many of y'all got the SJ Alert Me text? Y'all got the text like you were supposed to? If there was an error or something, just you can go on SOS and just check to make sure you're signed up correctly. If you travel campuses, right now you're probably automatically enrolled in the campus that you're officially assigned to in Banner, so if like you're a district employee. But Dr. O'Brien, you're usually, you kind of go to all the campuses for meetings and stuff. You might want to go on there and sign up for all the campuses in case you're on a campus when there's an emergency going on. As far as the college is concerned, important numbers to have, y'all should all know these. The 5555 if you have an emergency on campus. Um, if you are not in a campus phone, you can call from your cell phone. Y'all have the new number that we have up on our posters, 9128. Make sure the one you have in your cell phone is correct um, in case you need it while you're in the parking lot or walking around campus or something. Um, and then non-emergencies, the 1820, we'll call over there if you want to talk to Annette or, or you police chief or someone. And then if you have any students or you deal with students or your mom wants to know if the college is closed for some reason, they can call the 1888 number and um, we'll get updates on closures and things of that nature.